I completely realised that it is now the season to be jolly. I'm actually kind of looking forward to Christmas this year because I don't have to work, which is a rare treat. I'm waffling because I want to, okay? As you can see, we are we are in the full spirit of moistmas. Yes, that is what it's called. It has been for the last two years. I hope you like it, by the way. I might use it more. I kind of wish we had some festive stories to talk about. But instead, I want to talk to you about the very first HIV-positive sperm bank, which has me really confused for a number of reasons, but there is a context. I'm almost certain, though, they're not going to get many withdrawals once we go further into it. There's a stigma, of course, but we'll get into that later on. Firstly, because I keep forgetting to use this, I got sent a sandwich video. Delicious. Thank you, Eden. So the sperm bank in question comes from the Shire, or New Zealand, with its aim to fight the stigma surrounding the illness, the illness being HIV. Three HIV-positive men have already signed up to donate. All of them, though, have an undetectable viral load. This means that the virus levels in the bloodstream are so low that HIV cannot be transmitted through sex or childbirth. Now, Sperm Positive was launched by three charities ahead of World AIDS Day, which was on December 1st. Body Positive, the New Zealand AIDS Foundation and Positive Women Incorporated hope the project will educate the public about transmission of HIV, along with reducing the stigma for those who have the illness. The Sperm Bank, unsurprisingly, has said it will make it clear that all donors are HIV positive, but on successful treatment that prevents them passing on the virus. And while it does not operate as a fertility clinic, no, 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 it does ISAs and 401ks. We gotta grow that investment after all, swag. Sperm positive will put people in touch with local fertility clinics if they agree to a match. Quite the investment don't you think? I should say, for those who are on a successful treatment, and the virus is therefore undetectable within those people, that's fine. But of course, and understandably so, you're not going to get many customers coming forward saying, I want the load from that guy, yeah that guy, with the HIV, yes, in it, swag. One of the donors named Damiel Rule Neal told Radio New Zealand, that after he revealed his illness to his employer, he was bullied and decided to leave his job because of it. There is, of course, a stigma surrounding HIV, and naturally a discomfort many feel because they don't fully understand what it is. It is unacceptable you were bullied because of your HIV, if that was why you were bullied. It doesn't state that here. And while we do have science behind it that makes medication that makes it untransmittable for those who are carrying it, and there are people who have gone on with HIV to have children, that's great. You still need to educate the public to understand it. There have been, in recent years, a number of advancements in the treatment, which included a world-first kidney transplant from one HIV-positive patient to another, which happened in March. Antiretroviral therapy, which is a daily combination of drugs that prevents HIV from replicating in the body and can lower the amount of the virus in the blood to undetectable levels, which is fantastic. But, as far as public health challenges, it is one of the world's most serious. With approximately 38 million people having AIDS or HIV in 2018 alone, more needs to be done, of course, like any disease like this, to tackle it and I hope more progress is continued to be made in the future. I'm not entirely sure how far you can take a sperm bank that carries HIV loads, or undetectable load. I think perhaps you should stick it on the stock market and let the public decide. But that could just be me being a troll. Maybe we should just stick it in Johnny Knoxville's face cream, like the tip of the horse cum. Oh, this isn't gay. Over the years, there have been a number of advancements, along with the therapies also mentioned. Back in March of this year, a UK patient was declared free of HIV after stem cell treatment, 
with it becoming utterly undetectable. It is following the stem cell transplant, only the second case of its kind. The patient has now been in remission for 18 months and is no longer taking the HIV drugs, which is fantastic. But experts have said the approach is not practical for treating most people, but can one day help find a cure. The patient in question, who's obviously not named, was diagnosed in 2003 and advanced Hodgkin's lymphoma in 2012. Chemotherapy treated Hodgkin's cancer. In addition, stem cells were implanted into the patient from a donor resistant to HIV, leading to both cancer and HIV going into remission. On an individual case, this is absolutely amazing. Taking it further to May of this year, gay HIV transmission with treatment is now considered zero risk. Further evidence that taking anti-HIV drugs stops gay men passing on the virus to sexual partners has been called a powerful message, which should be more widely known. Sadly, though, this is not widely known. It is a huge advancement and progress being made. It is fantastic. I'm actually genuinely happy. I know I've said it many times, but I have to restate it because I'm truly surprised at the progress that has now been made. A study of nearly 1,000 gay male couples in the Lancet found no cases of HIV transmission over eight years. This was because of treatment reducing the virus to very low levels in the body. Damn, I wish we'd had this in the 90s. Freddie Mercury would still be here. The study in question followed 972 gay male couples where one was living with HIV and taking antiretroviral therapy, or ART, and the other was HIV negative over eight years from 2010 to 2017, with no cases reporting HIV being passed within the couples over that time. Now, they could have been celibate the whole time. You never know. I'm just kind of glad they weren't using that sperm bank. Going back even further, we can go back to July of 2017, where a South African child has been considered virtually cured of HIV. The nine-year-old was infected with HIV at birth, spent most of their life without needing any treatment, but was given a burst of treatment shortly after it. They have since been off drugs for eight and a half years without symptoms or signs of active virus. Progress. If only they could do the same with cancer, we'd be doing absolutely fantastic. I wanted to mention all this because this is all progress. It's not on par with that of sociological evolution, but to me, this is interesting. It's not the most festive story. I still think it's hilarious people donating to a sperm bank. Here, have some not detectable loads. Yes, I think it'd be fantastic in a bond. How does that grow over five years, I wonder? Ooh, bad image. Anyway, now that we're done with this, there's a new video on the Moisty Live channel. Uh, I should also let you know, at present, the Nico Cardo video is considered monetized, but I haven't got an email confirming it. Please watch it if you haven't already. Or if you have, please watch it again. Just turn on adblock. <laughs> I'll be streaming on Twitch at 8pm GMT, so I hope to see you all there. If I don't, have a lovely Wednesday. Is it Wednesday? It's Wednesday. Yes, victory. And thank you all for listening.